the learning units uh, for, or the learning objectives of this particular webinar. So I thought I'd just kind of highlight them as well. And, you know, I'm going to go through the, the five things, but actually I'm going to be talking about much more than just five specific workflows. But we're going to talk about um, renaming um, families or renaming data to match standards, whether it might be COBE data or it might be a particular um, system that you're adhering to. Then we're going to talk about revisions and revision control within Revit, then quantity takeoffs uh, from the Revit model, and then also the, the idea of um, editing parameter information much more easily than a Revit schedule, and then doing um, uh, showing you how you can assign view templates to uh, specific views within Revit, and actually uh, manipulating some of that view template information as well. So all of those examples are going to be using ID8 BIMLINK. So what is ID8 BIMLINK? Well, it's an add-on solution to Revit, as I mentioned, and it allows you to extract information from the Revit model. So you think about all of the information that you have in parameters and data, um, you know, the idea of even um, built-in system data, for instance, like the, uh, the height of a wall or the width um, or, you know, the geometry, maybe the square footages of rooms and so forth. So any of that data that you have, um, being able to extract it, a lot of times reviewing it, um, and then sometimes modifying or manipulate the information, and then being able to pull those changes back into the Revit model much easier and faster than you could make with a, uh, those changes with a Revit schedule. So hopefully I'll show a lot of examples of that today. And by the way, um, I am going to be answering questions at the end, but if you have questions along the way, you know, Dan mentioned it, please type into the chat window or the question, I'm not sure if it's the chat or the question panel, but either one, um, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of queue those up and we'll, we'll answer those questions as best we can at the end. So, um, IDA BIMLINK allows you to access uh, almost all of the Revit data, and we're always expanding this, and we're accessing things that uh, basically just aren't available within Revit, meaning that, I'll give you a quick example. Um, you know, the status of a family. Is it an in-place family or is it a, a loadable component family? Um, so we can basically uh, tell you or tick that to say, well, what kind of family is it? So Revit knows about it, but it's just not something that's actually schedulable by default within Revit. Another example is, you know, is the element pinned or not pinned? So we've exposed a lot of this data and we're always exposing more and more based on customer requests. Um, so again, you know, the kind of the third point there is, you know, access large amounts of data, um, you know, in, for in this particular case, it might be for quantity takeoff, but, um, you know, for all kinds of different workflows. Uh, we can actually create some new elements as well, uh, which I'm going to show some examples of uh, in a moment. So uh, we're going to basically, like I said, go through renaming families, editing revision data, um, doing a quantity takeoff, doing a... Um, uh, uh, basically editing some parameters via the schedule um, and then managing some view templates. So um, the, fir the first thing that uh, I'd like you to see or notice is that when I'm using ID8 BIMLINK, I'm going to start from scratch, meaning that there are no predefined, or I should say there are no links that are in the project, but you're going to see that ID8 BIMLINK ships with about 300 predefined sample links. And so that gets you started, and then you can decide which parameters you want to add or not add or use. So it's a great way to, you don't have to just, you know, say, oh, I want to start with this category called doors and then start adding parameters. We've already got these things that are already filled out for you, and then you can just make some slight modifications to them and use them. So uh, if hopefully if you are uh, familiar with ID BIMLINK or maybe you're trialing it or maybe you are a customer of ID8 BIMLINK, I hope that you go uh, away from this webinar and you realize that there are lots of sample data. Like I said, of over 300 um, sample links, and we're always constantly adding to that each time we ship um, to update the information. So let's switch, and right now, uh, today, I'm using Revit 2020, but I also wanna make clear that uh, we offer solutions, our latest updates, are on 2017, 18, 19, and 20. So the last four releases of Revit. 
So if you purchase either a standalone or our network version, um, you have access to the latest release, meaning that you know we just shipped uh, our latest release in May of this last year, or this year, I should say. Uh, you know, uh, 2020 was released in April, uh, and then we did a bunch of uh, updates in May that made us compatible with 2020, but we also updated 2017, um, 18, and 19 as well. So I just want to make sure that you're clear that even though I'm using 2020, you may have 2018 or 2019, and, and that's fine. You'll have the, the latest and greatest features. So I'm going to switch over here to uh, Revit. Um, and when you, if you're not familiar with any of the ID8 software solutions, as soon as you uh, install one of our solutions, you're going to get an ID8 software ribbon tab or ribbon panel. So when I come to ID8 software here, you'll notice that here are all the tools. And, you know, we mentioned that, you know, we have Explorer and Sticky and Style Manager and then our apps. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, today we're going to be focusing uh, primarily on ID8 BIMLink. So the way that you access this is, you know, you select ID8 BIM link. And like I said, I wanted to start here with no links uh, that have been saved in this project. So as I said, you could start like a new link and just decide, well, I want to look at, you know, ceiling information. And then I would have to pick, you know, which, um, you know, which type of link do I want? Do I want a instance or a type link? And, you know, what are the properties? But maybe I don't want to go through that right now. I just want to be able to, you know, like I said, load a sample. So we, our first workflow that I'm going to talk about today is renaming some families. So what I'm going to do is load sample, right? And see, th these are all of our, we have architectural links, Kobe data links, conceptual design, MEP, construction. So there's, we've organized them. But what I love about this is you don't even need to know which category, or I should say which organization folder, you can just type in. So I know that I want to rename something. So I'm just going to type in rename, just like Google, you know, as you type, it's going to give you the information. So I have duct systems renaming, piping, project standards, and space renaming. Well, I actually want to do project standards because rename types kind of gives me access to everything, right? Uh, and you can see here, rename all of the family names and types. So we've tried to give you a nice description of what that particular sample link is going to do. So when I select next, now it's going to say, all right, well, you've selected uh, that link, which applies, as I mentioned, to every category, right? So you see that all of the categories are checked here um, that I can uh, review. So to make it a little bit simpler, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to unclick this hide unchecked, and I'm going to uncheck all. And then I'm going to use the same thing like I did before, like that Google search, just type in Fern. And I'm just going to say, you know what, I want to do furniture. But, I, you know, I could do furniture system tags and so forth. But as I select a category, in this case, the furniture category, you can see that it's giving me a preview down below of furniture, the family name, the type name, and the type mark. Um, that's what this link is set up to review. So if I come over here to the, so I'm just going to look at pr uh, furniture for now. I'm going to come over to properties, and you can see there's the, over here to the, to the right, category, family name, type, and type mark. But the list of available properties is much longer. So I have system properties. I have uh, project parameters, shared parameters. I have family parameters. So as an example, if I want to look at just my project and shared parameters, these are things that were custom. So all the Kobe data is uh, custom created, right? And so there was this occupant capacity that was set. Uh, you know, so there are, these are uh, parameters that were created. So I might want to say, you know what? Let's go down here to some of the Kobe data. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, I wanted to do duration. Let's make this a little bit bigger. You can see, yeah. Um, so let's say uh, warranty duration unit, OK? I want to add that information, right? And uh, this has not been filled out that you can see that this is white. There's no data here the same way there's no data for the type mark, but there is the family name and there's the type name and of course the, the category. Now, if it's gray means that you can't edit that. So we can't edit the category or we can't edit the Revit element ID. That's how we're tracking all this information. Um, and then you can also see that, you know, I can actually have, you know, project information or RVT links. You're going to see that I have, available properties from adjacent um, categories or adjacent information that I'm going to be using as well. Now, in this case, it's a multi-category because remember, initially, this was 
not just furniture, but it was like all, all, all kinds of uh, different um, uh, categories, right? Um, and so uh, if I come over here to system, you know, maybe I want a description or something. That might be another one that I want to add. So, you know, I just add those things. Um, and if I, you know, it's pretty simple, I can just remove it or, you know, I can uh, basically double click or I can single click and then say add to add the category. All right, so now I'm, I'm done with this, or actually I'm gonna do one more thing. Um, maybe I don't care about the desk. I only care about things that have the word chair in them. So what I'm gonna do is come over to a filter. We already have a filter set up where the type name is editable. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say where the family name, right, contains chair. So you notice that I have all these uh, options, you know, contains, does not contain, has a value set. So again, there's a lot more, um, uh, information than just is what is available in the, the schedule. So I'm going to say contains the word chair. All right, and this is really important. Right now, by default, this is an or condition um, because I said, well, the type name is editable or the family name contains chair. Now, if I tick this, elements must pass all filters, it immediately creates an and condition. So that means the type name has to be editable and the family name contains chair. So this is a really powerful feature. Um, Autodesk introduced or as well as and conditions in view filters, but you can't apply an or condition to a schedule. So this is really, and we've had this actually for quite a while, um, so it's a really nice feature that you can continue going and creating or conditions as well as the and. So now I've set up a, a filter, um, and then of course I can sort that as well, you know, by category, family name, type name. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay, well now I'm done with it. Well now what do I do? Now I've got this link that is now stored in my project if I save it. I want to export that link out to my training, right? <clears throat> uh, so I'm gonna call it project standards, rename types, and we're gonna give it a name. I'll call it underbar. Um, MS for Microsoft Resources, and I'm gonna open up that file. So now I'm opening up the Excel file, and it's the list is pretty small, because remember I really kind of gleaned it down to just things that had chair and just furniture systems. So the first thing I might do is, oh, you know what, there's a lot of this, there's column E, column F, and column G uh, don't have any data. So let's just fill this out as 101, as a type mark, I'll fill this out as 102. And the great thing about Excel is you can highlight two uh, cells kind of to form a pattern and then just drag it down and it then automatically numbers. So the, the duration of the warranty, let's say is five years, All right? And again, I can do a control C and I can copy that down. That's something you can't do in a Revit schedule. Uh, the same way the description um, might be, um, um, I don't know, soft, that's terrible for, a, I'm trying to think of a chair description. So let's come down here and just do that, just to show you that there's some data that needs to be filled out. Now, I mentioned that we wanna rename this. So the family name, you know, basically maybe people had their own naming conventions, but you can apply a formula or apply a particular standard to this. So what I'm gonna do is come over to the right of this data, right, um, and I'm gonna say that we're gonna start a formula by using the equal sign in Excel. And I'm gonna say, I would like to have my initials for some reason be at the beginning of every family name of, of these chairs. And then I wanna do an and symbol and I wanna add it to C2. So what that does, you'll see here, it says, okay, took the RT, has a dash, and then here's the, the name, which it was from, from C2, the chair student medium. And the way that Excel works, I, I can just grab on this little drag handle and drag it down, and that now applies that renaming to um, all of the families. So the last step we need to do is I need to copy this information, and we're going to paste the values, so into this column C. So now I've pasted the values, so I've kind of updated column C, because this is, Everything you see here, where A through G is sort of, I'll call it the, the live data, if you will, or it's the data that BIMLINK's going to use, right, to uh, update the Revit model. 
anything that's out over here in column J, you know, or anything to the right is just going to be ignored um, because it's looking at the Revit element ID and it's looking at, you know, these the the fields that we set up, which are category, family name, type name, type mark, Kobe warranty duration, and description. Okay. So now I'm going to save this. We're going to come back over here to um, BIM link and, and um, uh, Revit. And so we have the link here. All I need to do is say import, and we're going to go out to the uh, project standards MS, right? That was, I said, Microsoft. And so what it does now is look at that data and from Excel, and it, it says import, and it updates it. And it's going to give me a, a nice little synopsis. So if I untick this show messages, if there were any warnings, like maybe I tried to edit a field that was not uh, like a read-only field, like a square footage um, in Revit, um, that can't be edited because that's coming from the, uh, the room bounding elements, as an example. So it would say that that's a read-only property. Or maybe um, this, these families are um, the, you know, the modifications of the families. Uh, someone has checked that out, right? And so I don't have editing access. So it's going to show me if there were any um, issues. The great thing about it, though, is if there is an issue, like, for instance, a work sharing issue, it doesn't stop the import. It just says, I can't edit that one table because Bob owns that table. Um, but all the other, let's say there were five others that are updated, those can still be updated. So I'm going to show the messages here. You can see that the information has been filled out. I'm now going to import. And when I import and close, you'll see that now let's come over here to the project browser. Let's come down to um, furniture, right? So um, families and furniture. And as I expand that, now you can see that all the chairs this brewer, stocking, tablet arm, dining room table, all the, they now have RT. Now I didn't rename the, the types, now, but I could do that. You saw that I had that available. So all the types, like in this case, there's the, di the dining room table has two different, uh, there's a 36 and a 60 inch. The other ones only have the one type, but I could rename those as well. Um, and if I click on any one of those, right? Look the, uh, over here in the properties palette to the right, you can actually see that my description was kind of crazy, but it says soft, um, and that it has, uh, for instance, the now the Kobe warranty data is for five years. So that's been updated as well. So, you know, you have all this other data that was added as shared parameters uh, or project parameters. Uh, those can all be filled out much easier in Excel and then populating that information. So, you know, just wanted to show you a couple examples of showing some data and then being able to rename items. And this was this example was furniture, but you know, you can rename views and uh, viewports and sheets and you know, any time that you want to rename something uh, to match a particular standard and you have to do that in bulk, IDA BIM link is a much better way to be able to do that sort of in bulk. All right, let's switch back over here um, to the, the PowerPoint presentation. And the next um, sort of workflow I want to talk about with IDA BIM link is revisions. So just real quickly, you know, revisions in Revit um, basically allow you, you can, you can have Re Revit revisions defined by per project or per sheet, and they can be numeric, alphanumeric, or, or have uh, neither one of those, basically. So that's just, is just, you know, Revit basics out of the box. And then when you place a um, revision, you can place a, a cloud addendum bubble, and then that, if you assign a revision to that, it's going to appear in the title block, right? So here, I'm just going to switch back over here to Revit, and let's go, and not that it matters too much, but let's just say, oops, I don't want to <clears throat> um, save that. So we've got this sheet, uh, furniture plan. So I'm going to go over here to my view, and here's where I would access my revisions. So already I have two revision sequences that have been issued, right? So they're checked. And I have this numeric, I have, uh, you know, basically three um, uh, RFIs, request for information. So if I want to create a new one, um, let's just go ahead and say add. And we're going to say that that's also going to be numeric, and it's going to be today is 07-09-19. Oops, 19. And it's going to be a request for information, let's say number six. 
All right, so I'm basically defining that, right? I'm defining what it is. I can say okay, and now if I go to my annotate, and again, this is all just Revit stuff. If I go over here to my um, revision cloud, I am now going to pick that new sequence which I just created, which was RFI number six, and I'm going to draw a cloud. All right, so I draw the cloud, finish it. And so what that does is now when I click on the cloud, it actually says it's, you know, sequence number six, it's RFI number six, and it has any data that I might want to uh, add to that or comments. But it also shows over here in the, the title block, the way that I've set this up is that it's showing me the number one and number two. So there's, in this sheet, I've got two uh, basically revision sequences or, you know, I've got two requests for information, number five and number six. Well, the interesting thing about Revit is that when you do a schedule, it only shows you the current revision. And so, you know, if you look in the, the example here in the, the little picture, it's showing you the current revision, the date, the description. Well, what if you'd like to show a sheet and all of the revisions that have uh, been, whether they're issued or not issued? Um, so there's really no way to do that in Revit. So what we've done in BIMLink is we've given you access to that information and then you can send it to Excel and then you can format it the way you like. So let's go um, over here, back over to, to Revit. I'm gonna fit this view, okay? And uh, I'm gonna show you that, uh, let's say, come back over here to ID8 Software and now BIMLink. Now remember, uh, I, I mentioned this several times, we're gonna be using all of these sample um, links. So I'm going to say load sample, and I'm going to type in the word revision. Imagine that. And you'll see that I have, you know, QC for quality control. Anytime you see like an, uh, uh, a uh, prefix, you know, we have QC. We also have project standards. Um, we have MC for multi-category. So we've tried to create like a little code here. So this basically says, you know, there's a QC for revision clouds, for revisions, uh, for revisions on sheet. What I'm going to do is do revisions on sheet and revisions. So I'm going to do a multi-select. So I'm going to do a control. You can also do a shift. What this does is it loads both of them into the, the list here, right? So now when I go to revisions and I look at the properties, you'll see that it's basically mimicking what I just showed you, right? Which is we just created this RFI 6, has this date of 07, 09, 19. And again, the, the other two are not available for editing because they've already been issued. They have the tick mark that they've been issued. But then what's key is when I do revisions on sheet and I say, look at the properties, it actually shows me all of the sheets, but it also has the sequences over here, as you see, uh, one through six, and they're ticked. If I'm gonna do the, the full preview, you can see that where uh, we have the, let's do, uh, Revision six here. Let me see that was in large plans. Let's come down here to where, there we are. So we have uh, RFI six, this was on the furniture plan, right? That's what I'm working on. That's what you see in the background there. Um, what's also really cool is we have the ability to do live editing. Um, and I'm gonna show you some more of that when I do the room schedules. But basically what I can do is say, you know what? I would like sequence six also on the sheet for equipment plan. So I'm just gonna tick that. I'm gonna say okay, and that makes that change. Uh, and I'm gonna close this. And then we're gonna go, I thought I had my sheets already set up here, but that's no problem. We're gonna go to my equipment plan. And you'll notice that because I assigned it, there is no cloud, right? Because I haven't driv uh, um, driven, <laughs> I haven't drawn any cloud, but the revision does show up because now I assigned it via BIM link, I assigned it to this sheet, RFI number six. So you can do that via Excel or you can do it, um, you know, uh, like I said, the, using the live link within the IDA BIM link dialog. So let's go back here to BIM link. And you've got those two, revisions and revisions on sheets. We, um, any ID8 um, BIMLink customer can request a template. And in fact, if you go to, um, you know, just support at ID8software.com, you can request this template for use if you're an ID8 BIMLink customer that I'm gonna be using here. So I'm gonna say revisions on sheet, 
export and it's a macro enabled template so that I have to switch this as a type otherwise you don't see it it's not a XLSX it's a, a macro template so then you'll see it's under ID8 DIR template v7 so I'm going to select that and save now I'm not going to open it okay so um, first of all I'm going to well, I'm going to override it so it, now it sends out the data but I'm not going to open it right now I'm now going to do revisions do the same sequence I'm going to export it uh, and we're going to switch this over to our macro enabled workbook and select that and say overwrite so now because I've done both tabs I can now open the file so in a second here this was the previous Excel file here we have now our sequences and we have the date um, and so what this has done is revisions is sort of what I call the raw data remember I talked about that that these are you know column B through column I here you know here's RFI 6 the new one that we created and there are then there's the revisions on sheet this is what you saw where you know basically there was a in the dialogue we had a little tick mark but when it comes to Excel there's no way to have a tick a little check mark so we actually say false or true um, so you can see that um, RFI 6 you know as I you know, go here you'll see that there is the is selected to be true um, on the furniture plan and on the equipment plan as well um, and then what we've done is this DIR um, it automatically I think uh, has updated but I can come over here to the data and I can say refresh all I think it's not going to actually change anything because it refreshes automatically but basically it says okay well here's all the sheet numbers you have listed you know top to bottom sheet name and then does that sequence appear um, on the sheet so in this case the first floor call out does have this RFI number five and if you come down over here you see that there's door hardware and then you see there's our equipment plan um, that we have and our furniture plan actually has the first one was RFI 5 and then the second one was RFI 6 so we're, we're creating this matrix basically uh, for the sheets as well as the revisions and so you might ask well now how do you you know what do you do with it basically um, you can take this information and use our other solution called ID8 sticky to actually uh, represent this in the Revit project meaning that you can link in the Excel data uh, the formatting the way that you like so I, I <clears throat> there is another uh, presentation that I did earlier with Microsoft resources called perfect synergy where we spent an entire webinar on doing just revisions and then um, basically managing this worksheet and then linking the worksheet back to Revit so I'd encourage you to go to their website and look at that webinar which I know they have as a recording on their website which is the perfect synergy using BIM link and sticky together um, so I, I, I don't have time to kind of go through all of those those details today but I wanted to, to, to talk about that and again the advantages of working with revisions with ID8 BIM link as opposed to just using the Revit schedule okay so next and you see that there's a nice example of you know the, the template we give you um, you know as you saw there the image is completely customizable you know it, the template just says like on my company but then you can fill out all the, the information that you want uh, and then like in this case you know there are different revisions where you know um, you know SD or DD as they had um, uh, <clears throat> the revision or the um, the releases for um, that particular set of of let's say construction doc documents or construction drawings okay so with another great example or workflow with IDE BIM link is quantity takeoff and so as I mentioned uh, ID8 BIM link is giving you access to more of the Revit data so things that uh, like the the height offset for walls um, the phase uh, option data you know it's multi-category so again this is another template that you can request from ID8 software if you um, are an ID8 BIM link customer you can request our QTO uh, and so what I'm going to do is now switch back over here to Revit and imagine that I'm going to go load sample and I'm going to type in the word QTO and you see that there's construction QTO and construction QTO primary option I'm going to do construction QTO that is our sample link and 
um, by default, the sample link is basically having all categories, right? So um, just to make it a little bit easier to demo here, I'm going to uncheck all. And, you know, it, it still doesn't take that long, but I'm just going to do walls. So I'm going to pick on walls, and then I'm going to pick on doors. And I'll just do, let's say I'm just interested in walls, doors, and windows. So there's windows. Okay. Um, so now, um, uh, basically, <clears throat> I have those. And let's see, uh, let's say, uncheck visible. Oops, what did I do there? Um, here. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so I have window. Oh, I did that window tags. Okay. And let's do walls here. Okay, good. Um, and actually, I think I've got some here. You know what? I'm going to uh, actually hide unchecked here for a second. Clear that. I think I goofed up here. Yep. So, okay, now I have none of them checked. Let's start this from scratch here. Let's just do walls. And let's do windows. And doors. Okay. Now I'll say done. <clears throat> and now the construction QTO, the properties there, you'll see that by default, we have... You know, we've done phase created, design option, level name, category, family name, type. So this is the information that we've basically sort of built into this particular property. But if you don't want the, uh, you know, like I said, one of these um, properties, you don't necessarily have to have that or you can add others. But to use our template, you know, we basically use all the information that's in this particular link. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to extract. So I'm going to export and we're going to go to the this one is not a. Um, uh, the, the, an Excel um, or a, a macro enable. This one just has a pivot table. So I'm just going to select this construction QTO, save that, overwrite the information, and now I'm going to open up the file. And so now it's opening up the Excel file. And what I want to do is, you know, this is the, the, the raw data. And you see that the category here is if I scroll down, you know, I've got walls, I've got windows. Uh, and I've got doors that I've selected. There's windows, there's doors, mostly walls though. That's sort of the raw data. The summary though, takes this information into a pivot table and I believe it's automatically updated, but what I'm gonna do is come over here to my data and I'm just gonna say refresh all again, just so it's updated. So there you see there's, you know, I have a, a, a takeoff summary. I've actually, you know, given it a name there. You know, let's just say takeoff. And uh, you've, I've got doors. I've got walls and the information, this pivot table has actually created a sum of the area and the sum of the volume and the same way with the walls and uh, the windows and the doors as well. Um, so, you know, there's the, let me see, walls, windows, there was, oh, the doors are at the top, the, the, the alphabetical, that makes sense. So you can see that I've got a, you, I have a count of how many I have of each one of these as well as some, you know, the, the the square footages or the area. All of that is available basically on the pivot table. And you see over here to the right, I can choose what information is being basically displayed from this raw data. And I've created a summary tab. And then that summary tab, I may want to link back into Excel using ID8 Sticky, or maybe I just want to have this at, in Excel that other people like I can be um, reviewed in a, uh, a nice format, you know, maybe eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17 format that you could print out and have all the information from the QTO. So that is uh, just real quickly being able to use ID8 BIM link to extract lots of information. And then, as I mentioned, you know, we have access to a lot of this non-scheduled data. So the idea that the, the wall rating as uh, related or as it relates to the door, um, you know, there's the different room uh, locations for elevations view, um, room and space data from linked files, dimension overrides. You know, this is just some of the many things that we give you access to. And I already mentioned the idea that we, you know, append elements or in-place families, you know, is lots more of that data that you can access. So I wanna come back over here now uh, to Revit. And I'm gonna come back to that uh, plan, oops, there we go, that we were working with. I'm gonna go down to my floor plans here. 
and my equipment and furniture plan. So let's just say my task is I want to look at some of the room information. And in fact, I have, let's say, uh, let's go to schedules here. I'm going to go to the room schedule. This is the information that's in this room schedule, right? The area of the room, the room type, um, there's some base finishes. This was already created for me, or I should say it was in the project. Maybe I want to use that as a starting point. So if I come over to BIM link, what I can say is instead of loading a sample that I've been doing, I can say from schedule. And so here are all the available schedules currently defined in this project. So I'm going to go to that room schedule. And I'm going to say next, and it creates the parameters based on the room number, the name, the area, all that that was available. And you see a lot of finishes. For my particular extraction to Excel, maybe I don't care about the finishes. So I'm just going to remove them. It doesn't remove them from the schedule. It's just removing them from this link definition. And then I might want to add some other information, for instance, like the department of the room. And then here's where I can select from available uh, adjacent properties. You see there's level, there's phase, there's project information. So maybe I want also the, <clears throat> the level, um, let's see, level name, and then the level elevation as an example, that I want to kind of reference that data as well. So now I've got this information. I want to say um, done. I'm going to export this. And we're going to give it room schedule. I'll give it a name. And now we'll open up the file. So now we have the, again, kind of the raw data from that's been exported out of uh, ID8 uh, uh, or Revit from via ID8 BIM link. And you saw that earlier on, remember when I was doing the renaming of the families, I can highlight a couple of them. And then I can say that's a sequence that I want to use now. And then you notice that there's some gaps here in the sequence. So if I just say, oh, those are the two, 101, 102, now grab on that, that drag handle, let's bring that all the way down, and it's going to renumber all that sequentially. So it fills out any of the gaps that may have been there. And then maybe um, I don't want this to be capitalized. So another nice feature with Excel is you can just say lowercase, and then you can say C2, which is the cell, and it makes it lowercase. And as I said, you want to drag that all the way down to apply that to every row, and then I'll copy and then I'll paste the values back there to update that into lowercase. You'll also see that there is a room type um, that has been um, displayed here. And the room type has a drop-down list or a pick list. So these are available room types that have been defined in the project. Classroom, common, hallway, office. So I can pick like classroom or I can pick uh, common. And if I decide common and I do a control C, I can do a whole bunch of these, come all the way down here and just say control V. I'm making those all common. You might ask, well, how did it know the information from Revit? Well, uh, back over here in Revit and IDA BIM link, when I look at this, the properties of that link, the link definition said export with drop down values that have this little uh, tick mark here. So that means if there is a set list of, for instance, like view templates or room types, um, or information where you've got a list that you're going to pick from, it's going to automatically build that for you, which is really nice. So I usually leave that, that, uh, t that tick mark on to have the drop-down values. So let's come back over to Excel now, and uh, maybe I want to create a new um, department called Admin, and I'm going to now do Control-C, and I can fill that out where all of those um, are missing data. So if I come down here, let's say all those, admin. And then let's say come back over here. Um, I showed you that you can, or I talked about you can create new information. So let's say I want a new room, number 148, and I want to call this the um, Microsoft Resources Hangout Space, right? And it's going to be a, uh, let's say, common. And uh, it will be, maybe it's occupancy. So I filled out some information here. I don't know the square footage of it because it's a placeholder room. There is no Revit element ID. So what I'm going to do now is type in the word new. That tells BIMLink to create a new placeholder room for that um, Microsoft Resources Hangout space. 
and uh, you know everything else that looks like uh, pretty good there I think I've updated so I'm gonna go ahead and save this oh I want to do one other thing I talked about error messages so this multi-purpose space um, this is gray meaning it's Revit read only but if I change this to 5,000 square feet um, you know Excel is gonna let me do it so I want to sh show you um, the the error message that you'll receive there so now let's come back over here and let's say import and we're gonna import our room schedule and open that up and now you see all of the again it gives you a nice preview of all the information that was changed if I untick show messages ooh, there's a warning the warning basically said I was unable to change the value that you specified you tried changing it to 5,000 square feet from its current value of 2571 and I can't do that because it's a Revit read-only property now it's giving me a warning it doesn't stop the import. It's just saying it's not going to change that value. Um, the other messages, though, it does tell you that it created a new unplaced room and it has these new properties. So now I'm going to import so I can decide, you know, yes, I do want to make that change, right? And let's come back over here to our multi purpose space. I'm going to tag on the room itself and delete the room or the, the <clears throat> yeah, the room object. I mean, it's still there, as you'll see. If I come over to architecture and now create a room, because I just deleted it, right, the room is there. If I come over to my, um, where's my, come on, place room, there it is. Um, you notice that the multi-purpose space, I had that, but now I have this Microsoft Resources Hangout space. That was room number 148. And so now I place that, and it has all of the data that I filled out um, associated with that. You know, I didn't do a whole lot. I said it was common. I said it was room number 148. I said it was occupancy. You know, but any of this other data or any of the, the Kobe information could be filled out within Excel. And then you create placeholder elements like sheets um, or rooms or spaces um, and be able to then place that and it has all the details there. So that's really nice. Another thing that I can do, and I, I wanted to show this as well, just to, I talked about it with the revisions. Let's go to BIM link here, and let's go again to um, my room schedule, and let's go to properties here. I wanna show all of them. So I'm gonna show the full preview. We're gonna come down here to the last one, which is the Microsoft Resources Hangout space. Let's say I made an error, and that should have been room number 150, and it should have been, the Microsoft resources, um, Emilio doesn't like Hangout, so we're gonna say it needs to be work hard space. And so now if I select okay, notice that I made that change. So I don't even need to go to Excel uh, to actually modify. Now, I will say that, you know, I think it's easier in Excel to make massive changes. You know, when you have, you can cut and paste much easier, you can um, do formulas. So there's a lot of benefits to Excel, but you don't necessarily have to have Excel to make changes because we've added this live editing as part of the IDA BIM link dialog. And so that was done um, uh, several releases ago, but if you're, uh, if you're not familiar uh, with the last several releases of IDA BIM link, you may not be uh, aware of that. Okay. So then I also want to talk about, I mentioned you know, editing data um, from the schedule. Let's look at views. So if we come over here to ID BIM link again, I'm going to type, uh, you know, again, my samples. I'm going to type in view, uh, my search window. And I've got a couple different things. You'll notice that I have, you know, viewports, uh, you know, QC viewports, but I also have view naming. I have view templates. I want to show you this view template one. This is the actual template itself, the view template. And we've given you with the latest release a lot more information to the, the, the top level categories in the view template. So the view template, basically I can, as you see over here to the left, I can actually apply like the phase filter, scale, VG overrides, and I can associate that and decide that, okay, you know what, for this uh, view template called architectural plan, um, you know, I, uh, let's say I want the detail level, I wanna change that to be fine, right? And I'm gonna update that architectural plan definition uh, to that, that information, so I'm gonna say done, and that will update it. 
And then I can say, uh, let's say load sample again. I want to do the views. So there's there's the actual view template, and then of course then there's the view name itself, right? So I'm going to go over here to views. I'm going to say next. And here is where we have the, the default that basically has the information about the family and type. That, so the, this is the view family and type, an associated level, whether it has a scope box, the sheet name, sheet number, view name, title on sheet. That, so everything, all these can be updated and changed. And notice that right now, this um, the view that I have in the background here, this first floor equipment and furniture plan does not have a view template. So what I'm going to do is select done. I'm going to export, and we'll say uh, views. We'll say that I already have that, so I'm just going to overwrite the one that's there. We'll open that file, and here's where I have all the views. And like I said, the 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 view uh, whether the view template has been specified. So uh, here's the first floor um, uh, equipment and furniture plan. So it's right here, right? It says none. Here's where I'm going to use, this is the great thing, is the drop-down list, right? And I can even expand this, make it a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to actually assign an architectural uh, plan to that. And maybe I want to then assign the view template to all of these plans. So I'm just going to pick a bunch of them and just assign it. And then again, save. We'll come back over here to Revit. And now import. And I'm going to import my views. And you should see in the background, once I import that and make the change, that it will update the template to have the architectural floor plan. All right, and you see there. And so now, um, again, it's, uh, it was, there, there are no warnings, but it basically said it, it changed the property on these particular items, right? Uh, on this, uh, the, the view templates and the elements. So I'm gonna say import, close. And you'll notice that now this view template in this view is set to architectural plan. Um, and the architectural plan, when I look at this in Revit, all of these, you know, right now we don't have the ability to go kind of one level deep, meaning I can't um, change which um, view uh, graphics or view visibility overrides are set. But what I can do is say this little tick mark here where I say include it, all that's accessible now within IDA BIMLINK. So you notice that um, the display model, the view scale, all of that I can update um, very easily now. And so, you know, things like the, you know, the color scheme location, the phase filter, the project north, all that is now accessible. So a lot of great information that you can manipulate with uh, using um, the views and the view templates within IDA BIMLINK.